when looking for the king of podcasts, you're at the wrong channel. Well, excuse me! Looking for good ideas for life? You're far from good hands. Hey, bud, what's your problem? If you think the listener is always right, you're far from the right place. Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! Hosted by a Northeasterner by birth, but a rebel by choice. Are you threatening me? If you want a host that floats between love and madness, and we know the night is always gonna be here anyway. Thinking of you's working up my appetite, looking forward to a little afternoon delight. Then play on and listen to Crazy Train Radio. All right, guys, uh, listen to the blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? Within the gaming world, there are your general gamers, but then there are those that enjoy the dark underbelly of gaming. If you're one of those that enjoy the dark underbelly of gaming, we certainly got the place to send you. Scorpion Layer Games. That's right, Scorpion Layer Games is the creators of the true crime hit Killers the Card Game. <coughs> Let's not forget they also have Killers Clothing Company, their profiler game, and things like the 5 Minute Murder Channel on YouTube. And we certainly can't forget the new book that is certainly a hit beyond the headliners, True Crimes, Myths, and Legends. Make sure you visit Jeff and the Scorpion Liar Games on Facebook and everywhere today. I'm Natalie Bull, and you're listening to Crazy Train Radio. Hey folks, it's your least favorite host in the podcast world, Croc. Jonathan Steele. And boy, do we have a good one for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this next guest is an entrepreneur and seasoned film and documentary producer that has been inspired with her own personal experiences and the persuasive issues going on currently on social media has led her to create her own new platform called Tribella, which is an innovative online dedicated platform that is concerned about safety and well-being of its users. This guest is an award-winning producer from Vancouver, British Columbia and has been a dynamic force in the entertainment industry for over two decades. Let's welcome Natalie Bowl. Natalie, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me today. Yes, of course. So when I was doing my digging and everything else like that for this this morning, there's a lot to you, that's for sure. You know, (laughs) you born and raised in Vancouver. Apparently you split your time in Germany, which We'll get into with the platform you're 
creating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you're a mom, you're an entrepreneur, you're you do stuff within the entertainment industry. Is there anything you don't do? I don't know. There's a lot that I don't do. <laughs> I don't stay up late. <laughs> okay. Well, of course, when you're doing 75 jobs, you need to get sleep at some point. Yes. So, you know, let's go there first with the platform. So where, what exactly was the inspiration for the platform? Well, it kind of brewed for a while, but the initial start of it was when my daughter was bullied on social media and she was quite heavily bullied on some of the popular platforms when from starting from about 12. And at that time, I didn't want her to even have a cell phone, but all the kids in her class had a group chat on Instagram, and it was very common for the students to be using the social media. And so with that, I never really understood the types of harms that could happen with a group chat on Instagram with a bunch of young students. And it turned bad very quickly and very it became very harmful. And I won't go into all the details, but it was a long journey of a lot of problems and a lot of harms that I not only saw my daughter experience through this, but also I started to meet other parents that came to me and expressed their children having harms on social media. And at that time, I thought, I'm working in media. I've been using social media my entire career. My first instincts were, I need to let these platforms know what's really happening. You know, my naive thinking that maybe they didn't know that some of this was happening. And the responses from some was nothing, just completely silent. And others were, yes, we're working on trying to make it safer. So this was in 2018. And, you know, two years ago, I started realizing that they weren't getting any closer to solutions. And if anything, the platforms were getting worse. And so I started to think about, well, what is going on with the designs? You know, what what is really happening? What is really causing these harms? Is it just people are mean online? Or are there features within the apps that are allowing these behaviors to grow and continue to happen. And my thesis for building Tribella came from my research that almost every harm that we're seeing can correlate back to a design feature. And if we designed that differently, we could create a safer environment for our youth. So, well, let me ask this. How old is your daughter now? She's 18. Okay. So if we're going back to say 2018, when you said some of this was going on, we're talking mm-hmm. maybe 13, 14. Yeah. Take? She was, she was just turned 13. Okay. So, 12, well, two questions with that. Cause like you said, we're not going to touch on specifics, but when you were talking with other parents and such, mm-hmm. did you notice it was some of the same things as far as the bullying and such you notice going on amongst the parents or was everybody every kid dealing with different things would you say well what was really interesting is that there was quite a few different harms so there was the bullying the direct bullying which they other parents were experiencing too and a lot of it comes from the ability to be anonymous you know the ability to be anonymous on anonymous apps that were integrated within Instagram, but also on those platforms in and itself, uh, created a lot of the harms that that ability. And so we were seeing a lot of issues with that, and that was what other parents were experiencing as well. Um, the ability for bullying within a school to then get much worse online, and then you know engage in other students from other schools, and it can grow bigger and bigger. But then that spins into a whole new set of harms, especially amongst young girls. And I was so surprised that this came out in the release documents from Facebook because they knew about it. And this is the harms of watching self-harming content. So with, you know, the same platform that they're getting bullied on, they're also going on it to see community. They're also going on it to get help. 
and the algorithms start pushing in my daughter's case as well, self-harming content, you know, she started seeing, you know, eating disorder content and stuff like that. So they, they go from one harm to the next. And this is what the parents were experiencing as well. The self-harming content was extremely dangerous all over TikTok and Instagram that starts getting fed on the for you pages. And so that was the second level of harm. But the reason I asked about the age when we were doing a quick math there and mm -hmm. you know, it's, and I don't have kids of my own, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I would think at 13, 14 years old, whatever, 12, 12, let's go even another year, 12 to 15. And, you know, it's, I would think it's difficult enough, especially for young girls at that period of time when you're, you know, you're just hitting puberty, you're getting into high school, you're doing that. Yeah. You know, I mean, just when we think about that time period in one's life in mm -hmm. a kid's life, you know, you got all these different things from different, then you add to social media. It's just like, it could like with stuff you guys were dealing with, what you just talked about there. It's just, mm -hmm. Oh, mind boggling. Yeah. 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 When you, and, and that's, that's a, kind of where the whole thesis for Tribella actually comes from is that, you know, in film and television, we have the family channel, you know, so mm -hmm. not all everybody's on the same channel. You're not going to have a 12 year old watch HBO. Yeah. And it's really naive of us to think that these younger users are not on the platforms. They're getting on even younger than 13. And there's nothing designed to be safe for that audience. Yeah. And so really with Tribella, I'm instead of designing for the adult user and the younger users just happen to come on, it's designed for the younger users and the adults can come on. It, yeah. Cause it's funny and we're going to get into Tribella for a sec in a second, but you know, it's funny cause I have a seven year old niece and a five year old nephew. And it's funny that, they don't use social media or anything like that, obviously, but it's, you know, it's different from like, and I don't know how old you are, but I would assume we're in the similar age bracket, but yeah. it's funny because they ask all the time, well, how come he did uncle, uncle Jay did this, watch certain content, this, that, and what all that stuff when he was four or five, six years old that, I may or may not have been watching it, should have been watching at the time. But now I'm like, I would never let them watch. You know what I mean? I'm exactly. in a different mindset. It's like, no, yeah. you're not watching this. You're not watching. But you did. No. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Not, no. But that's a whole nother, you know, conversation for another time. Yeah. But anyway, so with Tribella, you, like I said in the introduction, you are spend time in Germany as well too. And you, you started with doing a prototype with mm -hmm. a tech firm over there. That yes. So has a partnership with Microsoft for startups. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay tech wise, but you be speaking Greek to me in terms of starting up. So how does one develop the prototype and how do you guys get this ball rolling when you found this company to work with? And because I wouldn't have any idea where to start if I was going to start a uh, platform on social media. Well, it started first with research and understanding, you know, what what would even make a difference? Like, is there a way to design something differently? So I started just with research and sketching out what the features are causing the most harms, how could I design them differently? And then it went from, I'm very design focused. So that's why I've been really working on the design of the app. So right now I've developed the prototype as the design of a fully clickable app. And it is, you know, really it was just starting out visualizing what's the experience that the user will have. And that is done in a program called Figma which is an amazing program. It's kind of like an advanced version of Canva, but for developing apps. And then from there, the team and I worked on developing a roadmap of all the algorithms that need to be designed 
in one of the features that we have is that the user customizes their algorithms. So you are really in control over your experience and transparency is also a huge part of the platform. So users have a lot of knowledge of what their experience, what data they're sharing, how their data is being shared. It's, you know, following different rules in different countries. Um, so really it was just right now designing the features and the roadmap on how the engineering and the back end will be designed and our next phase implementation. So right now we've just developed the entire roadmap of how to make it safer and how it will look and feel. And now we're implementing it all into the, into the platform. I didn't know how to design this either when I started, you know, um, but it's very similar to producing a film. You know, you have a script, you have to get all your key talent, you have to get all of your crew and who's going to be part of your team. And that's really what I use that skill set to build the app. And, you know, with her research over time, she, I just want think it's important to mention that you've, uh, Gone different avenues. There's a program for well being of teens at Yale. There's yeah. the Harvard Business School online courses, and there's just different programs. There's a uh, Center for Humane Technology in San Francisco you were doing research and worked with. And yeah, you know, I mean, it's like she, Natalie is not looking just willy you nilly know, at this. She's dealing with heavy hitters and not only education educate herself, but also these different programs to help incorporate, to try to make the best program impossible. I even think there's some uh, leadership and management skills you were learning through Oxford University. So it's like, we're talking heavy hitters when trying to educate yourself here. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I really went down deep because this is not a small project. So I really looked at what knowledge gaps do I have? What do I need to learn? And the Center of Humane Technology from Tristan Harris, he did the Social Dilemma documentary. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, mm -hmm. but it's a great course that goes through the negative externalities that we're seeing on social media and from a design perspective. And so that was really, really informative for me and helped kind of plant the seed for me to go deeper. And then the course at Yale for teen well-being was really important because when we're looking at this app, one of the layers of harms we're seeing on social media is the mental health and well-being. And so what, what would it take to create a more holistic community for youth? What, what is missing from the current platforms and how can we design differently from the wellness perspective and the mental health perspective? So a lot of the design came also from that. And um, additional to the courses, I did take one at Harvard on launching tech ventures, which was more about how to the business side of this company. However, I'm breaking a lot of the rules. <laughs> so with all this knowledge, you also learn that they have a very, uh, the tech industry has some pretty strong rules on how to go to market. And a lot of my theory, developing Tribella breaks those rules. And some of the rules that I'm breaking are, they don't like user friction in onboarding. And for, for Tribella, we're verifying every user before they become a member of the community which in the tech industry is called friction. And also, you know, they love strong network effect where you can just swipe and add all your contacts as fast as possible. And in Tribello, we have a little bit of a, a sequence of steps to onboard your network, which is more consciously connecting with people before you just add them into your community. So these are things and features that we've created based on the research but they go against a lot of the, the move fast and break things mentality in the current tech landscape. Right on. Now, I heard that your daughter has been at, and maybe still is involved with the, the research and development so mm -hmm. of this. And obviously, she's going to be going to school this year. All oh, right. Yeah. Where yeah. did time go when you roll your eyes going, you know, what happened to the teeny tiny person? Yeah. Now she's off to college. But uh, 
what does she bring to the table as far as research? Because obviously there's the, and I get this shit wrong all the time, the Gen Z market, you know, when we're talking about her generation and such at 18, 19 years old, what does she bring to the table as far as research for developing Tribella? Because now, obviously, as adults, we always got to, what are the kids following? What's this? What's that? But as far as a research standpoint, besides the story earlier, what does she bring to the table to help make this uh, a good outlet? Well, she actually brings a lot to the table. First off, she brings to the table the experience that she had. You know, it was a very, very harsh experience. You know, her first experience on social media was very traumatic. She loves social media still. So she went off, obviously, during that time. I had taken her off the platform, but she went back on as she when she was older. So she brings the experience firsthand of... A lot of the negative aspects that youth are experiencing that they don't always necessarily tell us adults. And so a lot of the harms that us adults are talking about, they have a very different perspective. So she was able to go into her age group and she's done over 250 surveys so far of youth between the ages of 13 and 18. And within that, getting a lot of insight because there's so much talk right now is, is social media safe for youth? Is it not safe? Should we ban this? What should we do? And you'll be surprised the conversations that they have together and maybe without the mom going around doing the survey and her going around doing the survey, you get way more authentic answers and honest answers. And so she was able to do that. And we were able to use that research also to understand better the design of what the youth, what 13 to 18 year olds are doing online, what's important to them, what harms are important to them. And interestingly enough, they started flagging harms that I hadn't even had on my radar. And so this was really interesting for me. And it's why it's really important to have that younger viewpoint in developing the platform. What was the biggest thing you think you learned out of uh, these surveys that she did and other people of that age group? Well, because they've always known social media the way it is, mm -hmm. they have kind of normalized a lot of the harms and they've started to kind of self-mitigate between these harms and they almost take them as a fact, you know, that this is going to happen. This, this, this happens and this is going to happen. And I think that that was really interesting because they almost believed that social media couldn't be designed in a different way. The other thing that I learned from this was that sense of community and that sense of connection. A lot of people think that, you know, youth are just on social media 24 seven and they don't have community outside of that. That's not necessarily true. And one of the huge things that came to me when I got these surveys back and was looking at the data was a lot of them flagged like more fraudulent transactions for purchases online within the social media platforms. And this was really problematic for them. So it really made me realize that social media is the new mall and we haven't made it safe. Well, we're certainly good. Well, let me ask this before I do to bring up the other thing that I want to bring up. Obviously, you guys were are still developing and you have the prototype and everything else that we've discussed up until this point. It what is the time frame to have the full program and platform out? Where do we stand time wise to have what your goal is for Tribella? Well, right now I've self-funded the entire company and project. And right now I'm raising funds to do more of the safety and engineering of the back end of the platform. So if I reach my fundraising goals, then I will be launching the beta testing within schools in six months. And I'm guessing people can find out about the fundraising and such through uh, tribella.com? Yes. 
right on. Well, we'll have links to everything, like the Instagram at hello Trabella, Trabella.com, what I just mentioned. It's the same thing as IG on X. So I'll have those on all outlets. Thank you. The, the other thing I wanted to bring up was the Athene Films. So mm -hmm. it's a Vancouver based company, obviously. Mm -hmm. Recent works include Maker of Monsters, which airs on CBC Gem. You're working on a production of Code Shift. And there's been a pilot of Wastewise, which there's going to. It's actually out now, came out yesterday, but it's going to have a full season filmed in Rome during the fall of 2024. So and that will be a YouTube series. So with this company, what is the goal with some of the stuff you've done so far and going to be working on in the fall? Are you more documentary based? What do you think works for a... Uh, Athena Films. Well, so Athena Films, yes, thank you. Um, we have our current production on CBC Gem, Maker of Monsters, The Extraordinary Life of Bo Dick. And my passion is different storytelling. I like to bring out unique characters and unique stories. So it doesn't necessarily have to be documentary, although I love documentary. Uh, Code Shift actually follows the development of Tribella, and also we're looking at basically understanding the question, is social media net positive? So we're looking at all the negative parts of social media and the positive aspects of social media and discovering the, answering the question, is social media net positive? Um, so that's a really exciting project. I just got back from Vancouver. I'm in Germany right now. And in Vancouver, we were able to interview a lot of the local politicians in Vancouver around some of the legislation that they're putting in place in BC. Some really, really interesting things that they're looking at. They also are implementing a cell phone ban in schools in September. So that is a kind of goes together with Tribella. But overall, I think for me, working in media and now creating a more positive social media platform, I think that we consume media so differently now that I think that the two companies align in the fact that I want to create positive storytelling and interesting, engaging content. So eventually, you know, they might end up landing themselves on Tribella. But yeah, I think that we have quite a few projects in development. The Code Shift we started filming already. And we also have some television series that are based in Salt Spring Island in the 1800s and some other period pieces that we're working on, all different, unique, engaging stories that have um, cultural aspects within Canada. Well, like I said, for all outlets and all these different projects going on, I'm going to have links to everything. But Natalie, thank you so much for the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was really nice being on your show. Hey there, Friday fans. We know how much you enjoy the movies. Enjoy grabbing your Friday merchandise and interacting with the Friday family, whether it be at conventions or during our particular watch-alongs. Well, when you're looking to get yourself masks, why not check out our friends over at Camp Blood Customs out of New York State and order your specific custom mask from any of the films. All orders are made specifically. Your needs and wants are. Make sure you find Camp Blood Customs on Facebook, Instagram, and all over social media and order yours today.